I haven't forgot about that five dollars you loaned me the last time, but if you give me a little time, I will. <laughs> Wasn't this a beautiful day? Oh, yeah. Boy, I tell you what, I was ready to go do a little fishing. I'll tell you what, it doesn't get much better. I better get it in before it snows again. That's right, Leslie, because you know, they say here in Tennessee, if you're not from Tennessee, you might not know this, but uh, if you don't like the weather today, stick around till tomorrow. You're not kidding. I was talking to James over here. He said, the weather can be mighty peculiar down here at Rocky River. You mean even more than up at Fall Creek Falls? Yep. He said, last year, he said it turned off so hot during the growing season. One day, his field full of corn started popcorning right up into the air. <laughs> that's, that's pretty wild. Yeah, evidently the crows thought it was kind of wild too. They thought it was snowing and froze to death just watching it. <laughs> Yeah, and you know, James, when he was growing up down here, they didn't have much electricity or modern conveniences. Isn't that right, James? Yeah. He never ever heard of anything such as air conditioning. He said one hot summer afternoon he was growing up, he was hiking down the road and some fella picked him up. And he said that air conditioner was blowing right in his face. He finally told the guy, he said, listen, I, I believe you better stop and let me out. I'm going to have to go home and kill the hog. <laughs> well, I'm glad to see you made it anyway. Glad everything's going on down here good at Rocky River. And I understand you've had a little excitement at your house. Well, not exactly at my house. At my, at my mom and dad's house. Oh, that's right. They're still up in West Virginia. Yeah, I was talking to mom on the phone the other day. And she said all the cousins came in from the city to visit the farm. Oh, I bet that was exciting. Oh, you're not kidding. Those kids got to looking around at all the animals. Yeah, you appreciate this, Malcolm. One of the little cousins, Shirley, first thing she wanted to do was go pet one of the sheep. The sheep? Yeah, that's hard to say with your mouth closed, can't you? <laughs> you, you would have to throw that in. Oh, if it wasn't for me, you wouldn't talk. If it wasn't for me, you wouldn't eat. <laughs> Anyway, the kids were petting the sheep. Yeah, and one of the little girls, her eyes got real big. She said, hey, Mommy, come look. This thing's made out of blankets. <laughs> oh, I hope they got their education while they were there on the farm. They sure did. Dad said he took all the kids down to the barn, and it just so happened one of the cows was about to give birth. And all the commotion started. All the kids gathered around, and sure enough, they got to see the big event right there in front of them. Yeah, that cow started in the labor, and before you know it, here come that calf coming out. One of the cousins turned to my dad and said, gee willigers, I wonder how fast that little cow was running when it ran into that big cow. <laughs> and accidentally swallowed a 22 shell. Oh, my goodness. My mother about had a fit. She took him down to Doc Haynes right away. She said, Doc Haynes, what in the world am I going to do? He said, Margaret, just take him home, feed him a half a bottle of castor oil, and don't point in on him towards anyone. <laughs> Well, 
You never met such a good kid. He's got a good spirit, but when it comes to school, and he's not doing so great. Oh, well, I'm sorry to hear that, because he is a good kid. Oh, yeah, so he's not liking school? He likes school, all right. Clothes. Well, what about his grades? How's he doing? Well, he came into school the other day and marched right straight up to the school teacher's desk. He said, Mrs. Smith, I don't want to scare you or nothing. But my mama said if my grades don't get better, somebody's getting spanking. <laughs> you know, spankings have gone out of fashion. Did your mother spank you? Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Well, did your dad spank you? Oh, yeah. Well, which one hurt the most? Me. <laughs> Well, you've got a good family, and, and hopefully your little brother's going to do a little better at school. Well, he's sure all, he's trying awful hard. In fact, Mom told him that if, if he didn't do a little better, she was going to take away his new dog. Oh, he's got a new dog. A new dog? Well, what happened to his old dog? Well, they had to shoot him. Shoot him? Why? He was mad. He was mad? Yeah, like he wasn't happy about it either, I can tell you that. <laughs> So they got him another dog. Yes, they did. What kind of dog did they get him? Oh, you know, standard model leg in each corner, tail in the rear. <laughs> I, I was talking to him on the phone, and your little brother said something about he was a police dog. Oh, he don't look like a police dog at all. I wonder why he said that. I guess he thinks he's in the secret service. Well, anyway, hopefully he's a good dog. Well, little Bill said he found out the other day that he could read. He's pretty smart. He's smart dog can read. That's pretty amazing. Oh, yeah. He said they took him into town. Mom had to do some shopping, and he stayed out and walked up and down the sidewalk with the dog when he found out he could read. How exactly did he find that out? Well, there was a sign hanging on the fire hydrant, and it said, let paint. So he did. <laughs> brother better stay in school so he can do some reading and writing himself. I tell you what, I think you kids have it a little easy myself because, well, when I was in school, I could name all the presidents. Well, sure, there was only ten of them back then. <laughs> okay, that'll be enough out of you. It ain't coming out of me. Well, what do you think your little brother's going to be when he gets out of school? An old man. <laughs> well, well, doesn't he have any aspirations, things he likes to do? Well, he spends about half of his time being litty. That's what we call him, half-lit. Oh, oh, Wesley, I, I know he's your brother. you got to pick on him, but you, you know, you got to treasure him. In fact, he, he is a little treasure. He's a treasure, all right. I spend a lot of time trying to bury him, too. <laughs> Now, I see you got to behave yourself. Besides, we, we've got a lot of good music coming on this evening. James, are they about ready? Okay, good deal. I know one of them was running a little bit late. I think he might have had some car trouble. Well, we're not going to talk about car trouble. The last time I borrowed your car, I had a little car trouble myself. I know, and I don't want to talk about that. I told you to watch where you were going. Well, there was a cute little redhead in the convertible next to me, and yeah, I went right where I was watching. <laughs> All right, well, say goodnight to everybody. Oh, I hate that we got to leave this soon. I've had a great time down here. Always do it, Rocky. Rather, you guys remember you can wake up every morning for the rest of your life with a big smile on your face. What do we do? Oh, you just go to bed with a coat hanger in your mouth. That's all. <laughs> Super. Uh, Happy Grand Street making your way toward the front.